Hey, so this right here is running on 4.18, which is due out this week, so I figured I better actually get going and make a video about it. Um, there's, I ended up putting a decent amount of infrastructure changes in 4.18 that I hadn't originally planned on, but I've been trying to push out modifications because, um, well, I'm going to be a little busy here soon. The wife's due this week, probably. So, 4.18 should be stable when it releases. But I wanted to go over some of the changes that I made beforehand to let people know what's going on with it. So, first of all, let's go over top item on this list, which is VR Global Settings. I added a global settings area into the... Um, project settings section of the editor now for VR expansion plugin. I have some things I want to move over to it so that it's you know a more accessible global spot for things that don't need to be set per actor. But for now all I did was add in the one euro low pass filter settings into it. Just so I could get an initial initial setup for it. So these are for the um, controllers and I'll go over it in a little bit but controls how the smoothing on the secondary grip works with controllers now. So um, you can change these values to play around with the controller smoothing. And then laser beam smoothing. Since I ported in the Euro 1 low pass filter from the VR editor that they use for uh, smoothing the motion controller laser, and now you get the wobbly laser beams. Let me move over here. Yeah, I'll flip the preview screen around so I can see myself. All right, so now you get the wobbly laser beams when you're interacting with stuff. And I'm not using an extremist setting as they have by default in the editor. By default in the editor, they use about twice the minimum cutoff that I'm using here. So they're really wobbly, but that was a little bit too much for me. So I'm using these like half values. And it's, uh, I like them. They were pretty good. They're fun to play with. It gave me another reason to implement another low pass filter. I already had two. I had an averaging low pass filter and a, um, some kind of weighted dynamic low pass. I don't remember. I haven't actually used it for anything. So now there's a third, which is the Euro 1 low pass filter, which is the same as the VR editor uses. And it's pretty interesting because it was intended to smooth like mouse motion and human input into computers. So it's useful for quite a few things. Like secondary hand smoothing. Here, let me turn off the camera for this bit. So secondary hand smoothing is something, well, I always had it before for secondary grips, where if you grip the front object, you could set a smoothing scaler and you would scale your front hand influence from last frame to this frame to smooth it out a little bit. But that was never all that useful because there was only one frame difference and it wasn't dynamic based on your input. So what I did now is since I had this native Euro 1 low pass filter edition, I incorporated it into the smoothing setup so that now it uses the VR expansion settings, one Euro settings, to control the settings for this Euro filter the secondary grips uses. And then the secondary grip scaler, which is secondary grip scaler right here. 1.0 is no scaling, so it's just hand locked to you. You set it to 0.0, .0 which is what this first gun is, and you have full smoothing. It's just the full amount of the smoothing that's been applied by the um, Euro 1 low pass. So you see how it takes a little while to follow after my hand and doesn't follow the super extreme motions too much. So that's full smoothing. And then if you go over here and you choose this one, which has the scaler set to 0.5, so it's half smoothing, it's faster. And it locks to the, let me draw that laser, and it locks to the hand more. But it's still smooth, so it's easier to keep stuff stable because you have to actually move your hand a bit before it zero gets rid of the zero out from it from its average. So now it's a much more complete smoothing system. And um, should be more useful for 
two-handed smoothing setups. You already get some from if you keep the um, late update off when double gripping, as in you don't get the late update and you're already a frame and a half or one frame behind. So that's a little bit of smoothing, but now you have the actual additional smoothing on the front hand, which makes it easier to stabilize. Uh, it's a little harder to hit balls in motion but it's stabilized. Um, and then we have a distance-based influence, secondary, secondary hand distance-based influence. Now, distance-based influence is taken from that video that Node released when they were going over their duck hunt game. I don't remember the name of it. It was based off of duck hunt. And they made a shotgun so that the closer your hand was to where it was supposed to be on the grip, the more influence the hand had over the rotation of the barrel. And that's a great idea. I didn't like everything that they were suggesting in their video for gun mechanics. In fact, I didn't like a lot of it, but that made a lot of sense to me. So I incorporated that. So let's say you have your hand here and the guns may be pointed out this direction from the controller. So I have a socket here for secondary grip. So right now I know that my secondary grip is supposed to be here. So I go and grip there to it and I have my secondary grip. And if I pull away from there, see how this hand is still pointed forward? but the gun's rotating to this hand. There's now a grip secondary secondary grip distance variable that you can access in the grip setting, not grip settings, in the grip structure, which will tell me how far away the secondary hand is from where it's supposed to be on the barrel to this hand. So like right here, it's basically zero. There's no secondary grip distance. Here, it's probably like 20 units or so of grip distance. And then as I go out, I start to lose influence over this gun barrel based on the distance settings that I set up for the secondary grip. So if the grip distance falls off too much, I lose all influence on it whatsoever. My hand's over here, it no longer controls which way this gun rotates. But when I bring it back, it locks on and I have full control again. Now these default values probably aren't very useful. Um, they're set rather high, but I hadn't taken time to play around with the default values yet. So I added, I had advanced physics settings beforehand for the grips and I changed it up. So now it's advanced grip settings, which has the physics settings in it and then secondary grip settings in it. This way I can be more flexible in the future and I don't have to make very many plugin changes. So it has all the normal physics, advanced physics settings in here. Let me move this camera over here and turn the camera back on get a close-up view of this it's easy to read for people okay so we have above advanced script settings is used advanced script settings so you would tick that on and then you'd use use secondary grip settings so you enable that on the object so like that gun has it enabled and then secondary grip scaler is the amount of smoothing one is basically no smoothing and then 0 0.5 would be half smoothing and 0, 0.0 would be full smoothing. Use secondary grip distance influence. You turn that on and you enable what I was just showing you with the gun where it's a distance based influence from the secondary hand. Grip influence dead zone. It's set to 50, which is why you know it barely did anything there unless I stretched my arms all the way apart. That's the amount of distance that it considers you to be in full control of the barrel for. And then outside of that, then there is grip influence distance to zero, which is set to 100. So after that initial dead zone of 50 units, you then have a 100 unit scaled zone where you fall off from full control to zero control. So at 150 units total, you have no control of the barrel anymore. So you could set the dead zone to like 10 units and to fall off to like 100. And then at 110 units away from your grip distance, you have zero control. However you want to set it up. That's just the basics. I mean, these values are honestly way too large. You would want something smaller like an uh, influence dead zone of 20 and distance to zero of 20 to 30 maybe. And then you would get a nicer fall off from your control. I also added limit grip scaling, which if you check it, you can set minimum and maximum grip scaling for um, when you're scaling objects. Let me move this back over here. So let's say I was to take, 
I can't see the console against that black. Let's say I was to take the console object and uh, which way can my camera sees me and start scaling it. By default, the console has no minimum and maximum scaling that can it can go to. It can go to the smallest size possible. It can go to lo larger than the entire level, and you know that could be a problem with some things. So. I added the minimum maximum grip scaling in, and you can set maximum limits for scaling on objects now. I realize that might be a problem for gameplay elements that allowed scaling. All of the advanced grip settings here, um, they're controlled by their enabling booleans. So if you set enable, let me flip this key. Okay, so if you set enable, second, use secondary grip settings here, it then will potentially start replicating all the settings underneath this section. So use secondary grip settings, lets it know, hey, I need to start replicating secondary grip scaler because they might be using it now. Use secondary grip distance influence means it's gonna start replicating the dead zone and distance to zero, same with the limit grip scaling. This means that initially, for objects that don't use the secondary grip settings at all, if this is unticked, it's a one-bit cost on the replication of the structure. So, not bad. And it goes from one bit to, I think this is only 12 bits or something. I have, no, secondary grip scaling. Yeah, it's like 12 bits because I allow for some precision on it. So I limit the max value of secondary grip scaler from zero to 1.0 and it's to a two decimal precision. And then uh, grip influence dead zones limited to a set amount. I think 512 is the max, you can, or 256 is the max you can go on that. You're never going to need more than 256. Same with distance to zero. I mean, if you have 256, no one has that wingspan. So I limited the value so I can save on the um, replication costs of it. Same for all of the physics stuff. If it's disabled, it won't replicate any of these variables. And if it's enabled, and if it's enabled, then it will. The ones that are selected. So you can kind of control your replication costs that way, which ties into the replication improvements that I made right here. I made a bunch of replication improvements in 4.18 that were needed for a little bit, where I fixed some of the net serialized functions and I compressed more things. I still haven't managed to get interaction settings to be completely compressed. It's not the biggest issue because it's only replicated once or when changed and only if you enable um, grip setting replication. But I mean, it's still pet, interaction settings period is still kind of a pet peeve of mine. I really wish they didn't exist anymore, but I'm sure you all know that by now. Uh, grip distance, along with the secondary grip distance that I added, I figured it's about time I just add grip distance itself in. I was already calculating it in the, um, in the tick anyways for figuring out the auto drop and not everybody wants auto drop, but they might want to do something where I had a user say, Hey, if they lose their object too far away from them, it's colliding with a wall. Instead of it automatically dropping, they lose it. I'd like it. So it just, you know, turns off collision and flies towards them. I'm like, Oh, that's a good use case, <laughs> but I don't really want to hard code code all those different interactions in because you know, it's, more gameplay and it's not something I should really handle. Auto drop I probably shouldn't have handled to begin with. So now there's grip distance, which is in the grip structure. And you can check that on tick on whoever has grip authority, which is the node you can check has grip authority and then they're allowed to control dropping or picking up and stuff like that. And you know, if grip distance is above 250 units, the object's way over there from you, well, hey, turn off collision on it, let it come back to you. If it's an interactive grip, then turn collision back on when grip distance is below whatever you're allowable for tolerance. So people have access to grip distance, which they didn't before. It's nice. Um, I had somebody that was trying to rename the template project because he was making it into his own project. And he was having problems because renaming UE4 projects isn't entirely straightforward. So I said, why not? And I wrote a quick C-sharp program that's part of the template now. It's, I mean, it's in the template folder. I include the source because, you know, I'm open source on the project itself and it's kind of bad form to include compiled EXEs, even if they are C-sharp and they can be reversed. 
So I include the source and then standalone exe in the projects directory. And when you trigger it, it'll search for the U project, pick up the project's name from the U project name, and then allow you to choose a new name. And then it'll rename all of the source files for the project. It'll set all of the uh, folder names and it'll rename all of the build.css files to be that new project name. And the, it'll rename the U project. So it's, you know, click on the program, hit a couple text box, message box, OKs, and enter in the new project name, and your project's renamed. Pretty simple, pretty easy. I'll just leave that there. It shouldn't ever have problems. My C Sharp is very rusty. I don't use it too often anymore, but it's functional, and I mean, it should work. Uh, Euro 1 low pass filter, I already talked about that being added in. It's a it's blueprint implemented though, so you can use it wherever you want. Unlike the other live low pass filters, which you can do as running filters, um, like the running average, you just pass in a number and it passes out the new number. But the low this uh, Euro 1 low pass requires a history, so it's actually a structure, and you use some blueprint nodes to add to the structure on tick with your new information and then it spits out the result. You can see it on the um, motion controller, the teleport controller, that's what Epic named it. In the, when you have the be enabled sm laser smoothing enabled, it uses a low pass filter in blueprint to do this laser beam smoothing. So you can see how it works in there. All BP interactables converted to native. All right, so it's about time. I've been converting all the interactables in the game to native code for a while now. And I left the ones in the level, oops, on my camera behind. I left the ones in the level as the blueprint versions, the like test ones I made before I converted to native code. But now they're not. Now these are the native actors instead of the blueprint ones. Uh, the button is as well, as you can see, supports, oh. It's not in 4.18, but in 4.17, it'll be merged to 4.18. That'll be the native version. So um, I kept all the Blueprint implementations enabled. Well, not enabled, but still in the plugin because I wanted, you know, if somebody wants to sometime make their own lever with custom logic and they're only a Blueprint coder, it'd be easier for them to use, to base it off of my test Blueprints that I started off with instead of my C++ ones that I made. So they're still there, but everything in all the level for the test level is now the native versions. Also, I don't know. There's a couple other things I, I changed, but most of it's uh, pretty minor. So I guess that's it. So I'll see you guys after my baby is born and I guess 4.19, which has major changes I have to make to movement replication. So. That'll be fun. See you.